2009 was really interesting because for the very first time, uh, volume sales were no longer propelled by the population behemoth that is China. China's own rate of growth slowed. It didn't decline, it just slowed down. So essentially it wasn't able to pull the global volumes along with it as it has done hitherto. So we saw a decline of about a quarter of a percent, 0.25% in 2009 compared to the previous year. Um, this was also partly down to a huge tax-driven decrease uh, in sales in the US, which declined by about 30 billion sticks, which is quite significant. And the US is the second largest market in the world, which obviously has an impact on global volumes. Even though smoking prevalence, i.e. the proportion of people who are smoking is going down, the actual per capita of consumption of cigarettes is going up. And how can that happen? That essentially um, suggests that you have now what is known as a core smoker, the person who's smoking 20 packs of cigarettes a day. So previously, you would have had your um, global smoking population diluted by the occasional smoker, whereas you know they may have given up in the face of public smoking bans or government uh, health initiatives and so on. So what you're left with is a core smoker. Manufacturers are adapting to this as well. Tobacco is the sort of industry where um, the maxim is that essentially volume declines don't really matter as long as your value sales are robust because these are the sales that generate profit. And for the first time in 2009, we've had um, almost a decline in value sales. It's been marginal growth in value sales. I mean, of course, this is also um, as a result of currency fluctuations. That's the chief imperative behind that. Um, however, this is compared to an increase of 10% in value sales the previous year. Um, so that's unprecedented. We expect value sales to pick up in the next, you know, in, in this year already, 2010, but it won't be seeing double digit growth. It will be around 4 or 5%. So that's a new thing for the industry as well. Premiumization is essentially the tool by which manufacturers maintain these value sales. So they add value to products and therefore warrant a higher unit price. Um, but of course, if there's a recession on your smokers who are smoking the expensive brands like Marlboro might be migrating to lower brands and those in mid price to economy and so on. Um, but premiumization is over. It hasn't been as affected in the recession as one expected. It's a relatively resilient um, category. What has happened is the economy also hasn't seen the same kind of increase that you'd expect. But what has been the winner uh, has actually been illicit trade. Illicit trade now stands at about 600 billion cigarettes globally, um, and that equates to about 10% of total consumption of cigarettes in the world. We expect this sort of growth to continue for about the next two years, and then it will settle and illicit trade will then continue on its downward swing. And the recession's been interesting for, for the tobacco industry. Each country's been affected differently, and there have been some regions where there's been a fair amount of down trading, so consumers buying cheaper brands and moving to different price bands. I guess the UK is a good example of what's been happening because it's actually done some unexpected things. So, for example, in the UK, we've had declines uh, over the, at least over the past five to ten years. And suddenly in the year of recession, when you might expect it to continue going down, it suddenly went up. And in the UK, what's happened was other ancillary factors came into play. So, for example, when uh, there's a time of recession, what happens? People travel less. And the UK, the second highest unit price country in the world for cigarettes. Most British smokers, when they go on holiday to places like France or Spain, go there and buy their cigarettes there. If they're no longer traveling to these countries, and uh, Euromonitor passport data shows that uh, Brits traveling to Spain and France went down by a whopping 16% on average in 2009, that means basically you're buying your cigarettes at home. So your domestic sales go up by default. And also, canny British smokers would be buying uh, bulk cigarettes. So you'd be buying a multi-pack of five packs of 20, for example, to save a few pennies. But of course, as any cigarette smoker will tell you, it's very difficult to ration yourself when you've got this, you know, pack of 100 odd cigarettes in front of you. So of course, by default, they smoked them and therefore sales went up. And the other benefactor, uh, as it were, of the recession has been uh, Roll Your Own. Roll Your Own has, is a cheaper product to buy. And so to save money, um, consumers have been buying Roll Your Own, uh, particularly in Europe. In Spain, for example, where cigarette sales fell quite dramatically in 2009, Roll Your Own shot up by about 30%. Um, but to be sure, Roll Your Own 
uh, in general tends to do well when there's a price discrepancy when people are trying to save money. However, that said, in uh, the US where there was a huge tax increase also on Roll Your Own in 2009, uh, sales of Roll Your Own plummeted probably by about 40%, so a huge amount. Um, but this was picked up by the pipe tobacco sector. So at the same time as you saw that 40% decline for Roll Your Own, pipe tobacco went up by about 110%. So, you know, as, as it basically became the Roll Your Own tobacco for for roll your own smokers.